is surely in this place. And so a couple words I just want to mention to you. Uh, again, tomorrow evening, 5.30, the children will be here. And that will be a great event for us and so glad to see things moving. We also celebrate, as I understand, the latest reports on COVID. The numbers are in the green zone for Baldwin County. So they're dropping for whatever reason. That's a good thing. So we'll go with that. It's good to hear the visitation between yourselves tonight. And uh, we look forward to a lot more of that in the month of April. And then also, don't forget Sunday, sunrise uh, we'll be outside, but I promise it'll be brief because I know it's going to be cold. 7 o'clock and uh, breakfast will be hot. So we'll look forward to that, and then 11 a.m. is our service time. Okay, and uh, Marcia, if you will, come lead us in our Holy Thursday prayer. Let us join together in prayer. Glorious God, your anointed one, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us the pledge of eternal life. Amen. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown in that old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see For t'was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me To the old rugged cross I will never be true It's shame and reproach Gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling 
to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown Our scripture tonight is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, taking into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you, you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. They, then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night... They are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. The word of God.
slain. He is living still, our longing hearts to fill. Let us adore and worship the Lord. Let us Thank you, Vernon, Chuck, Marsha, Becky. I appreciate the uh, support and the efforts in worship tonight. We've all been uplifted. And what is Monday Thursday? It is, uh, it's a day of remembrance. It's a day of remembrance. What is the cup and the bread but a remembrance of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ? So tonight we commemorate and remember, and that's the point of coming together this Thursday. And so it's a great experience to think on the fact that uh, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and finisher of our faith is seen in the earliest seasons of this deliverance, which was found in the Passover of the Jews. Uh, And so it was Jesus celebrating the Passover with the disciples. And so in that uh, commemoration, we come together tonight. We come to, uh, to share the cup of communion, but before we do, we take a moment to remember, to reflect on the day that it was. Uh, Through the season of Lent, we have looked for ourselves an opportunity to repent, to confess, to draw near to Christ, and I hope that that journey has been fruitful for you this season. And as we approach and come through this time, we're now at that time when I'm reminded that they ate, and tonight just... uh, Humor me as pastor, if you would, tonight we'll do something a little different. We'll take communion standing tonight as we think of the spirit in which Passover was taken. It was taken, it was eaten in haste, and they were standing. Uh, and so we'll do that tonight when we come to communion. And, uh, but what it says is there was, there was cer- certainly dread was going to fall upon those who were falling under judgment. But what was it for God's people? And so as we look together at the body and blood of Christ, the Passover Lamb of God, we think about the sacrifice, the price, but also the deliverance. And that's what was on the minds of God's people at this time. Uh, The promise from the Alpha and Omega is that here in this, the Hebrew beginning month, they would begin their journey out. And so we see that we will commemorate and continue to commemorate through the ages uh, the supper. And it is a gift of God from beginning to end and the author and the finisher of our faith. So tonight we will do communion standing in that sense of expectation that God did this for us, that with the Passover lamb and the specific instructions that were given, there was great promise and the anticipation couldn't have been higher. Uh, The people of Israel had been uh, in captivity uh, after the days of Joseph. There arose a Pharaoh who did not remember Joseph any longer and all the good that he had brought as God's instrument to Egypt and to the children of Israel. So there was this time of slavery, and they cried out to God, and he was ready. He heard them, and uh, as they say, God always has a man. Sometimes God always has a lady. God always has one of his people in place to deliver his people. That's good news. All this culminates in the fact that Jesus Christ, the Alpha, the Omega, the author and finisher of our faith, has been that Passover lamb. He has been that man for us. So tonight we join together also with the spirit of those who were in the room with Christ, the disciples. Uh, What a special time it was for them, though they could not begin to conceive of all that it meant that night. They knew it was special. They knew it was important, and they knew that they had to continue following Christ, even into this time of what seemed to be just tremendous crisis. But it was crisis with a promise that God brings out Uh, salvation, 
once he has rendered judgment. And God has rendered judgment against sin. He has fully penalized sin in the flesh of his son, Jesus Christ. There are no more hopeful people in the world than a Christian person. We have deliverance. We have hope. We have a future. And we have what this world desperately needs. Will you be that beacon of light to your neighbors today? You know, uh, before we transition, I just want to mention a few thoughts from Scripture. God is big on commemorations. I'm glad. Uh, does anyone here like a July 4th feast? Does that sound like a good thing? We like to celebrate our liberties and our history in the United States. At least many of us do. And so as we celebrate, that's a picture of what God's been doing all along. He is a God of commemoration. In fact, He even commemorates us, Malachi 3.16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before Him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed His name. Your name is written in the book of God's remembrance. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. God is uh, better than we are at record keeping, and I'm thankful for that. But let us re realize tonight that's what we're doing. That's what we're here for, to commemorate, to remember. And with remembrance comes what? Uh, we'll soon have Memorial Day. We'll honor our vets. We'll soon have Mother's Day. We'll commemorate. We'll remember whether living or passed on our mothers. And then comes Father's Day. The same applies. When we come to remembering, it's a time of honoring uh, as these who esteemed the Lord and feared His name. And so James 4.10 tells us the best way to commemorate, the only way we can honor others, but especially God. James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord and He will exalt you. And so I urge you today to consider this. We can't give honor until we humble ourselves. That's the truth of life. You know, it's great to know. Uh, and I know we have teachers. Uh, those who work with children is a great example. Uh, the Lord condescends to people of low estate. When we humble ourselves, as they say, uh, we'll, we'll never be greater than when we stoop to help a child. <laughs> And so it is God stoops to help us. Humility, humility comes before honor and before we can properly honor God. So humble yourself tonight under the mighty hand of God and let Him exalt us and He will be exalted in our hearts. 1 Samuel 16, 7, let God give us this vision. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on His appearance, or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. In a place of humility, we get to see more of what God sees. We get to see it in children. We get to see it in adults, uh, and more readily so. So I urge you tonight, as we commemorate, let us remember that it is with honor that it is with respect, and that God is big on honor and respect as well as memory. And so let's turn at this time, and uh, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking henceforth in His holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. 
that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is my body. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Likewise, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink ye all from this. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice, your church, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And if you would stand at this time, and we will uh, take together the Lord's Supper. The body of Christ is given for you. blood of Christ given for you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>